All right, ladies and gents, boys and girls, welcome back. Pants are off. I got myself a fresh cup of water so I can be hydrated, and uh, let's go ahead and get back into Thousand things here. Ruins right beneath us. It's not active now, but there should still be some power left. We're gonna go down there and activate it, and then we should be able to salvage the big prize. Mm hmm. Okay, let's get to work. Roger. All right, so if we want to return to the ship, we can. There's actually a guy that gives you a bunch of free potions if you really care about it, but for our purposes, we really don't. We're just gonna keep on diving down here into the ruins. This is, uh, the beginning of this game is kind of a walking simulator. Uh, it, it definitely takes a while to get to the real beefy part of the game where you're actually, you know, left to, to you know, actually have some real combat, but once you get, you know, past that point, the game starts to get, or once you actually get to the point where it's not just purely tutorial gameplay, things start to get a lot better. But we're still a good ways away from that. It's probably not until we get to, man, maybe after Luca that things really start to get good. Not that the game is bad right now, it's just, it's definitely not nearly as good as it could be. I mean that in, like, the best way possible. It's, it's not a bad game. But it certainly kind of lacks that finesse in the early game that makes it really interesting. But part of that might also just be because I've played this game a million times and I'm kind of sick of playing through this part that you can't skip cutscenes on. So I'd said in a previous episode I've never actually beaten the Dark Aeons or Penance, and that's kind of like gold. And that's why I'm using a strategy guide right now. Just to, you know, if I'm going to have to use a strategy guide to fight the Dark Aeons, you know, it's like I, I might as well go through the effort to make sure I collect everything else along the way. Now, random encounters are a thing here, so we do need to be a little bit careful here. Ah, this isn't a random encounter, but it's an encounter nonetheless. Now, this is kind of weird. So, this right here is a piranha. This is another piranha. But it says that there's just two of them, when really there's six of them. So the trick here is that the, the groups of three piranhas have 150 HP, the groups of two have 100, and then the single piranha has just 50. And that's really all there is to it. And groups of three are counted as one enemy, which is a little weird. A little weird. I, uh, I'm not sure why they decided to do that. Maybe it's just so that way there's not six enemies on the screen trying to attack you at once. Oh, come on. There we go. Allow me to rehydrate. Another reason why I chose this game to play, out of all the other games I could have chosen, was because I really wanted to play um, an RPG while I waited for Persona 5, uh, the Royal, to come out. And I was really torn on this game or playing um, like Monster Hunter World. And I actually started Monster Hunter World last night, although I kind of have a feeling if I had decided to LP that game, it, it would have been not a great idea, honestly. It's, it's a slow start. So anyway, this boss right here, this one's actually a little bit tough and he can, um, and he can, um, he can do some things to, to, to make you feel bad here. He has uh, 2,200 HP, and you can steal some grenades from him, so we're going to try to steal a grenade. And we did! Uh, in the meantime, we're just going to try to attack him. There's no point in really doing anything besides just attacking, and with Riku you can uh, use the grenade, which I will. Now this will move him to the other side. Once he's taken 350 damage, he'll go away from me. And you have to do a pincer attack, which is a trigger command. So the basic idea behind trigger commands is they're in the same area as your overdrives. So you just hit stand by here, it'll heal you. Stand by here, it'll heal you. But he's going to do something called the Nautilus Charge and bring us back in. Now that actually did do a pretty good chunk of damage, so we do need to be a little bit more. 
try stealing again. Ah, no, that's not good. Ow, that actually kind of hurt. Let's try stealing one more time here. Really? Okay. Well, I'm going to have to use a potion. I definitely don't feel comfortable leaving myself with that little HP. Um, we can cheer, but you know what? I would rather just attack. I'd rather just get the damage going. Alright, I'm going to try this one more time here. Man, three times. That's, like, very unusual. You're supposed to be able to steal grenades from this guy pretty consistently. <clears throat> so that's kind of a disappointment that it, nothing is working out. I guess we'll just attack them, just because I need to get some damage on this guy. Alright, and now we're going to do the pincer attack. This way he can't do another one of those, uh, I think it was called a Nautilus charge attacks on us. And this way he can only focus his attention on one of us at a time. Um, it's kind of annoying that they, ooh look at that, that we couldn't do the pincer attack before, but it's not that big of a deal. Oh man, two critical hits in a row, look at that. Man, you just don't like Titus, do you? Well, we will go ahead and just use Spiral Cut. Hey, look at that. 736, that's a lot of damage. Hey, look at that, he's dead. And for, th and for this, we get 8 AP. <laughs> So, we, so, we did end up getting a spear level upgrade, and the rest of this episode is probably going to consist 100% of just cutscenes. <laughs> I hate to do it to you, but there really isn't a whole lot else I can do. It's, it really is largely just cutscenes from here. It is pretty cool that we got the power working on this place, though. <clears throat> now, I've said before, I love this game, but there are some things about this game that irk me greatly. Um, one of them is the fact that you can't skip cutscenes. This game will not let you skip cutscenes at all, and that is something that I just despise. I love this game. But if I want to watch the cutscene, watch them for my own consent. <laughs> it's, um, the story's good, it really is, but I just don't see a need to watch the cutscenes whenever I've seen the game and played it, you know, 12 times probably over the course of my life. It's, it's just one of those things where I feel it's appropriate for them to give us a button to skip them, but they, uh, they just don't. It's kind of frustrating. So we're looking at some sort of ancient ruins here. Maybe it's important, maybe it's not, I don't really know. Whatever it is, it sure is buried, though. Alright, and with that, we're back on the ship. Fafutra airship! Radalukt van an Hmm, <laughs> shaking off like a dog. We can understand one letter of the language, you know. Hey! Hey, I helped out, didn't I? Yeah, jerks. That's not cool. Leaving Titus out here to, to die. Well, not actually die, but <laughs> that's a little bit grim. Uh, hungry. This is where this character starts to become kind of annoying for some people. This is a character that a lot of people just really like or really just don't like. And a lot of people just don't 
seem to like him that much, but I don't think he's such a bad character. He's a little stupid. Hey. It's because you eat too fast. I'm pretty sure that's the only time you see him eat anything all game. Hello there. What is your name? Riku. Whoa! You really do understand. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Uh, why didn't you say so earlier? I didn't get a chance to. Everyone thought we were a fiend. Uh, we? Oh, we means you. Don't go French on me. Um, on me. Who are you guys anyway? We're out bed. Can't you tell? Wait, you're not an Albed hater, are you? I don't even know what an Albed is. Where are you from? Xanarkin. I'm a Blitzball player. <clears throat> Star player of the Xanarkin Abes. Did you hit your head or something? Mm. Um, you guys hit me? Oh, right. Do you remember anything before that? So I told her everything there was to tell about Xanarkin. And I guess now is when he spills the beans. There, Blitzball yep, and sure Sin's enough. attack. And about how Aaron and I were engulfed in this light. I just said things as they came to mind. But then I started to wonder. Did I say something funny? You were near sin. Mm -hmm. Don't worry, you'll be better in no time. They say your head gets funny when sin is near. Maybe you just had some kind of dream? You mean I'm sick? Because of sin's toxin, yeah. You sure? Yeah. There is no Xanarkand anymore. Sin destroyed it a thousand years ago. So no one plays Blitzball there. Huh? Oof. The bomb what, has been dropped. What do you mean, a thousand years ago? But I saw Sin attack Xanarkand. You're saying that happened a thousand years ago? No way! Oh, man. I hate to cut the episode short again, but it's actually kind of working out. I'm about two minutes away from the original ending of this episode, and oops. Uh, it, it just makes more sense because we have to talk to her again, and we have to go through another long cutscene before we can continue with the game. So, I hate to do it to you guys, but I'm going to go ahead and call it quits for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed the content, though. If you guys are enjoying it, make sure you guys leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys on the next episode. Thank you guys for watching, and see you guys next time.